everybody uh welcome in today as you can see it might be a surprise to some of you um but here we are uh back again in bendy in the dark revival because um there was a update a small update that came out today that added the archives um into the game which is something you can only access once you finish uh the full game the full story so I don't really know what to expect. I think it might just be like we get to walk around and like see uh, like characters up close and like admire the beautiful, beautiful artwork and, and detail that went into these characters. But I don't really know um, because I literally came home and updated the game to check this out. So give me a second to get my controller to function so we don't have to use... The mouse and keyboard because I did play this game originally um so also if you haven't finished the main game yet you might want to you know you might want to wait before seeing this if you want to avoid any spoilers I don't know um but let's let's see what this is hello Welcome to the Archives! Bendy in the Dark Revival is filled with numerous characters that each had a critical role to play in progression of the game. Here in the Archives, you will learn a little bit more about them in an up-close and personal way. Feel free to explore. Ooh. Can I just say that I hate it? Is, th is that acceptable? Oh, this is creepy. Whoa. Okay, the Ink Demon. As the world of Dark Revival became more complex and established, we realized the Ink Demon's design need to be, uh, needed a complete rethink to match our new tone. Previous versions of his appearance looked silly when placed in a world alongside the other characters. No amount of creepy music or screen effects could conceal how out of place he looked. The Ink Demon needed to look different than everything else in the world and show a natural progression of the Ink de Demon's evolution as Wilson held the cycle in place. Oh, man. Little Devil Lounge. It's so creepy that there's no sound in here. The Ink Machine, designed by Thomas Connor of Gent Corporation, stolen by Joey Drew, retrieved by Arcgate and uh, Archgate, and once again reclaimed by Gent. The Ink Machine's next machine is a mystery. It is kind of cool seeing, like... All this stuff up close without, like, the consequences. There's Audrey. She's looking like a badass. Kind-hearted rogue with courage, determination, some flaws, and a deep, dark past. To make our story work, we need a newcomer to the cartoon world, to the cartoon studio world, and Audrey was the perfect fresh eyes to help the experience, to experience the adventure. We knew if people didn't connect with Audrey by the end of the game, the game itself would not be successful. I definitely agree with that. Wilson? I hate him. Wilson was a different, char difficult character to balance. The character, the players are purposely led to believe he is a one note character, obviously evil with an over the top villain personality. But we see other sides of the character and the player becomes muddled with who this man really is. In one draft, Wilson was written as a servant of Nathan Arch Jr. A separate character at the time, but the story made more sense when the two characters became one, eliminating a lot of needless narrative uh, complexity. Too much dry air, not enough fish food, Harold, no! Oh, this is so weird. Porter. Um, Cartoon World was able to grow and advance, creating such characters as Porter, a lost one who came to claim a new identity as an explorer. He was written with the knowledge that Dark Revival would feature a far more serious tone than the first game, and his light-hearted innocence would help the player feel some warmth in this inky world of sorrow. Even though I'm pretty sure he's the guy that I tried to push down the drain. <laughs> Heidi. Oh, she looks... Mm. I don't like her feet. 
It's believed that Heidi has spent some time in the pit. A prison set up by Wilson and the Keepers is unclear why, but mostly, but most likely, mostly likely, she was able to access places she shouldn't have. The pit changed her, as it does many, reverting her into a childlike state. Okay. Also, do you think we get an achievement for going through all the archives? Hello? Sammy Lawrence, the famous music composer of the studio. He originally had a slightly larger role in the story, but uh, the story was already filled with so many characters making them all play a meaningful part became a challenge. He was ultimately sidelined in favor of telling a more coherent storyline, although it's interesting to note that Sammy Lawrence appears to have mastered the flow ability in Bendy and the Ink Machine long before Porter and Audrey could wield it. That is... um. That is oddly... Okay, Alice Angel? Holy cow. Look at her face. The self-appointed queen of the studio, Alice Angel, is one of the most memorable faces in the Benny world. Forever lost in a tide of his insanity, she is an absolute delight to write for a character. An angel with many layers. Time will only tell if this inky temptress will ever reappear. Um, I feel like she would definitely reappear. A muck, Lord Amuck, ruler of a sewer cult. It illustrates how the world of the ink had continued to develop into different societies deep within the darkest palaces, though he was weak in fight in a fight. His name will simply never die. Oh I hate it. Oh I hate it. Ship Ahoy Dudley. <laughs> this is the terrible creation Wilson made. Uh created serve dual purpose, blah blah blah. Crackle the Crab. It is unknown just what kind of cartoon adventures they would have had together. Oh. Look at him. The Lurker, or Steve as he became known, was originally cre created as a brute type of enemy. Uh, ultimately felt unnecessary. In the end, the Lurker found a much better calling as an unlikely ally, effectively expanding him into more than just a typical enemy. Oh, I hate that. Ink widows have begun to infest where the light grows darkest. Their king, the biggest and most feared, will only emerge from his nest when its young when its young are threatened. And we already read about that. It's weird they didn't give us any music for this area, but that's okay. This is a big room. The keeper, deadly guards and scientists. They aren't perfect, but the peepers bleh, the keepers will keep the job done no matter the cost. They're responsible for pressing the ink demon inside a smaller form, keeping his power sealed away, until Audrey came along and unknowingly changed the situation. Mm, they're meant to reflect dangers and evils of the ink machine itself. Faceless beings made of gears and wires, with no sense of mor morality. What around like cattle. I'm trying to like, sort of skim, but also kind of read it. The Butcher Gang. Barley, Charlie, and Edgar. I never remembered their names, to be honest. Um, in Dark Revival, we meet an artificial fourth member, Carly, the ghost girl. Oh, yeah! When you begin to examine her closely, Carly appears to only be a shell with perhaps someone inside. Oh. Oh, it's so weird seeing them, like, up close. I kind of, like, hate it. <laughs> okay. Neat. Oh, and I forgot we didn't even go to this other side. Do I dare? Okay, well, that's not a trash can we can open. That's fine. Betty, faithful maid to Wilson. She was an important character to the story as a failed experiment and somewhat relatively new to the cartoon studio. She was able to give a somewhat different point of view on the state of the world. We have purposely left it unclear if Betty was in on Wilson's plot to harvest Audrey or if she was just a bystander. Behind her mask, there are still answers to be found. She is so creepy looking. There's Joey Drew. I don't know what's going on with his feet there. The man, the legend, the memory. Uh, creating this version of Joey G was exciting and a daunting process. It was clear from the beginning that Joey would be different from one of, from the one from the original Bendy and the Ink Machine. Man, today I, I picked a terrible day to record when apparently I'm struggling to read today. 
Um, anyways, this was a man with all the guilt from past life, but without the experience to fully understand it. The real Joey Drew made many mistakes, but ultimately learned from them. This doesn't absolve him of his, his sins, but at the end of his life, he was able to correct some of them and help fight the darkness he created. That is very true. I see Henry. I see a lot of big people in there. Okay, well, I guess we'll go in this room first, because I don't know what the hell that room is, and it scares me. There he is, Henry! It's so weird, like, knowing what Henry looks like now. The original cycle baker, the cycle breaker, not baker, breaker, uh, filled with finding a way to escape and finding his way home to his wife, Henry is now left with the cold reality of being a recreation of the person he thought he was. Saved as a special surprise for the fans, uh, Henry was strictly omitted from all public discussion the character during the entire production, which spanned several years, but Henry returned with a very satisfying face reveal. I love that they did that! Like, oh, it literally says Cycle Breakers. Oh, I love that. There's Allison. Look at her being a freaking badass uh returning for another victory allison is always the voice of reason a beacon of hope her design was carefully upgraded from the previous game to maintain her personality uh purpose of meeting allison so early in the campaign was to introduce the player to a familiar face at the start allison was able to serve as the motivating force for audrey until the true plot kicked in later and Tom. <laughs> Tom is Alice's silent protector and the only Boris clone involved in the main story. Where's Boris the wolf? Rumor has it that during the events of the game, Boris is experiencing a dark survival story of his own. Hmm. Are they just referencing, like, the side story that Boris had that, like, we did play... I did play, like, an hour or so of that. Um, oh, this is just them out of ink form. That's why it looks so fucking weird. God. Oh, it looks so weird. Nathan Arch. Um, everything Joey Drew wasn't. He worked hard, built up from nothing, and never compromised his integrity. Nathan accomplished his own dreams. Him and his wife Tessa raised a son. Uh, sadly, his son did not share Nathan's natural talent for business and enterprise. Oh, man, they look so weird not being in, like, ink formation. This whole room is just, like... Oh, it's so different. Um, okay, Audrey has blocked out the memory of her past after losing her father, but his role in her life was not over. A Anim uh, talented animator and artist, her skills landed her job at Archgate. Was it fate uh, that led her to reunite with Joey Drew's machine, the machine of her birth, or was it planned? That's a good question. Bendy the demon. Wilson! Um, he stumbled upon the ink machine and was able to become the cartoon world's new master. Holding the cycle in place, he continued his experiments. Experiments that could not have fully been realized until the ink demon was purged. However, unnaturally entering to and from the ink realm has taken a toll on his physical being, slowly robbing him of his health. I guess that's why his, like, eye was, like, fucked up. I think that might be everything. Artist rests. Oh, and of course, Bendy. We forgot to read about... <laughs> we forgot to read about Bendy. Um, he posed several minor challenges, creating a face that sported the classic Bendy eerie smile, but still managed to be heartwarming in the right conditions. He's a fan favorite, so his design had to be just right. During production, we originally envisioned Bendy to talk with a series of cute squeaks. Oh. To the contrast of the dark, low voice of the ink demon. But this turned out to be very distracting and the idea was scrapped pretty early on. Yeah, I do feel like that would have, uh... That would have perhaps been... That might have been a little <laughs> weird. Oh, the way they, like... Glisten? Oh, look at those teeth. I hate that. Well, wow. I guess that was literally everybody? Oh, that's so interesting. They even gave us, like... Hmm, she looked creepy when she smiled, I'm not gonna lie. They even gave us Audrey in not ink form? That's so weird. 
Um, okay, well, um... I forgot that he makes those sounds in the freaking intro. Um, I think that's pretty much it of the archives. Um, if I find out that there's anything uh, extra that maybe I missed, um, that, you know, warrants a video, I'll definitely post it. But, um, it looks like the archives is just a really cool way to go in and look at all the characters that we saw throughout the game. And I think that's a nice little touch, especially, like, now that we get to look at them where it's like, oh, okay, they're not gonna kill me, so now I can, like, appreciate their design, but from... From afar. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let me know what you guys think. And, um, yeah, I guess that's gonna be it for this video. Kind of a short one, but it was nice to have a reason to come back to this game. Because, obviously, I, I love it a lot. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!